This makes me so incredibly angry. I who is this guy actually? Sex is bimodal. I think if you ask, it's it's, the, it's genuinely not any 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 it's scientist. It's not bimodal. Totally is. Oh no, bro. He like raised it. Would you like me to answer that? Oh, I'm gonna blow your mind. You know what bimodal means? I don't know. It means that intersex people ex exist, and that there's an overlap between the two bell curves. Oh, sorry. Yes, you're totally right. This is... I, I'll take a big L right there. Sorry. That, that, that means... Do we have a standard on why we why should why should we we should there's, accept? There's, if you want to know their methodology, there's a click here to view the methodology thing. You can find that out for yourself right there. But this is not a peer-reviewed scientific paper. This is a meta-analysis, Tim. Uh, okay, of so I, 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 I reject scientific it. papers. I reject it. I reject. Okay, so if you want to reject that, I would bro. Write. Next thing you're gonna do, you're gonna tell me ivermectin is some cure because of a meta-analysis. This meta has nothing to do with it. No, 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 no bro. This has nothing to you do can't with come, You can't come to me. When everyone tries screaming about ivermectin because of a meta-analysis that I reject and say, I don't think it works. You can go and then have someone We're from the left about come to me and now claim meta-analysis is effective. No, the point is this. I said, give me a study and you- The problem was for what Lance says, oh man, this is the trans area is the one area he should do well on. Lance didn't provide a study and um, Lance didn't even provide a meta-analysis. He provided a literature review that was non-peer reviewed that was posted on Cornell's website. I don't know if Tim Pool just, but Tim Pool doesn't really understand all the terminology either, but holy f holy yikes, Lance, not good, chief, not good, chief, not good, not, not a good part of the chiefdom here. Cannot do it. I am on my way to give you a third meta study. A Those combination aren't studies. of cities. These Those are aren't studies. No. And the problem is that like, he basically lied about what he provided. The problem is that, um, the problem is that this actually makes Lance it either makes Lance look really stupid, like even more stupid than I thought, or actually bad faith. And that Lance was like, okay, I'm gonna go on with this like post from Cornell's website and I'm gonna pretend that I have a meta-analysis or I'm gonna pretend I have a peer-reviewed study knowing that I don't have either of those things. So was Lance actually lying? Like was he just falling because he prepared this? This was his point that he prepared or was he just that stupid? Oh, if we go study to study okay, back and bro. forth, Tim, this is going to take. So one. let's give look me one, one study, one study, one study, one. <laughs> Dude, I've given you two. Give no, me one. This is embarrassing. I've got like embarrassing. You here. can't give me one study. Okay, I've given you two, and I didn't even make an assertment. I googled it and pulled up what you I found. You want individual studies instead of meta analysis, which is ridiculous. But sure, here's individual studies: the mental health outcomes in transgender non-binary non-binary. Pretty sure Lance is one of those leftists that's blatantly pro, pro blow, uh, blatantly pro propaganda. No, 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 no. This is not pro propaganda. This is uneducated. He just he doesn't know. He doesn't know what any of the things. What he doesn't know what a meta analysis is, and he doesn't know what a study is, and he doesn't know what peer reviewed means. That's the issue. Um, but it's also because Lance doesn't give a f about humans. He doesn't really give a f about trans people. He doesn't care about any of these topics. This is all just a big, cloudy, cloudy virtue signal for him. That's all this is. That's all any of this is. Did, um, I'm actually curious. Did he graduate from school or anything? Is he like a... I'm just, I'm curious. Oh, there's like nothing here. I'm just, I'm curious, we actually like, what do you want to school for? Our youth receiving gender affirming care from February 25th, 2022. This shows let me, that- Let me type it in and pull it up for yeah, you. Yeah, but I can explain to them while you're doing the, your own research. Can you, can Kids you, who I receive need, I need puberty to blockers name is, and pull it up. mental health outcomes in mental transgender- health outcomes in trans Transgender and non-binary youth receiving gender affirming care, February 25th, 2022, peer reviewed study. The findings, kids who received puberty blockers and hormone therapy had 60% lower odds of moderate or severe depression and 73% lower odds of suicidality. Here's another individual study for you. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. That, 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 not, nothing to do with desistance. Do you, do you want to go back to desistance studies? That's what I was asking you about. I, I Google search desistance. Wikipedia Look has up. two studies that say it's 61 to 98%. You said that's wrong. I said, what's is, your it, source? Yes. You didn't give me one. I did on the spot. You gave it's, me it's a okay. meta-analysis that is not peer-reviewed. It's not a peer-reviewed source. 
if, if, if you, you want to go back and forth, Tim, on single studies, like I said, this can take forever. So it, 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 it do you not have a single study? I've named you tons of studies. No, no, no. You've given me a meta-analysis, not a single study. A meta-analysis combines other studies. Do you understand so how what, that works? Yes. So of that, the so 55 what your studies argument that it looks, is, no, of the is 55 that you've got 72 at, studies that have drawn a conclusion, and then someone that looked at them and made it different. Tim. You're saying that out of 72 studies that found a conclusion. No, 55. It's, 50, it, it looked at 72, 55 talked about detransitioning. I was, I was, it was a... It was a Hypothetical number. 51. 51. You're, you're looking at yeah. a bunch of studies that have come to conclude. Is the Cornell analysis not a peer reviewed because it's just a website and not a paper published in a journal? So, um, what peer review means is peer review is like I do a study and then I submit that study. I go to a journal and I say, hey, you guys got have, you have like a board of researchers and people. Usually you're specialized. It'll be a journal dedicated to a particular topic. Um, I did research about this topic that you guys all know about and um, I want. Uh, I, I want to. I want you guys to publish my study. I want you to take the study that I put. I want you to publish it in your magazine, and the researchers there will go, okay. Well, we're a journal. We have a reputation as a journal. Um, we're going to have our people look over your study to make sure that like you didn't fuck up some obvious shit or you didn't do something wrong or bad. So we're gonna look over your methodology, um, we're gonna read your paper, we're gonna see if we agree with your findings, we're gonna make sure you didn't make simple errors or complicated errors or whatever. And then if they feel like your study is good, we'll go, okay, this is pretty good, we, we approve of this, right? We're gonna publish your study in our journal. That's, that's the peer review process, roughly. Um, roughly speaking, different people might have different peer review processes, who they send it to, how they do their research, whatever. Um, but the um, the Cornell website thing is is just Cornell, which is a school, right? They decided to have their own people do um, a literature review, meaning people from the university, whoever they say, um, whoever they credit on the site, decided to read through some studies and then they published their opinion on those studies. Nobody else went through and made sure that their methodology was good. Nobody said they agreed with them. Nothing that Cornell did was peer reviewed. It was just a, it wasn't submitted to a journal, right? It was just posted on Cornell's website. That's, so it's not, it's not peer, I can't even say it's not really peer reviewed. It's not peer reviewed at all, right? Conclusions, of course, that are peer reviewed. And you're saying, but someone uh, analyzed those. Cornell University did. Who from Cornell? Click on, click here to view right, methodology you, you, and you can learn about the their methodology. You just rejected it outright when you saw it. You were like, oh, it's I not a study. Okay. It's not a study. It's a meta-analysis of studies. These but are different things. It's not a meta-analysis, it's a literature review. Neither of them know what either, the difference between either of these things are though. I don't know why my hair is weird. Okay. The central problem with the literature review not being peer reviewed is that they could be cherry picking the studies. They could be doing anything. We don't know, right? Things. But, but, you're, but you. the problem is these studies have their own conclusions. You're ignoring. They that's not necessarily their conclusions true. To reach their let me, let me let me let me that's, that's let me explain for those that want to understand what I'm trying to say. During COVID, there were a whole bunch of studies done, individual studies, peer reviewed that found ivermectin did not work. The right kept bringing up meta analyses that said actually it does. I mm -hmm. said, and I said, none of none of this is true. I don't. This to Joe Rogan. I reject. Destiny, I feel like you're making it out like a system, a systematic literature review is just a meme. It's a totally valid piece to bring up the circumstances we're seeing in the show. Uh, Mr. Teaspoon, if you're a researcher, then I'll defer to you. From my experience reading research, that is not true. You, you don't, I don't think you typically go to like a literature review. You can do that to get a very broad finding in a field um, and maybe point towards future research. But I don't think literature reviews are generally like conclusive. Like a literature review isn't testing or rejecting hypothesis. There are no p-values or anything like that, right? A literature review is basically saying like, we looked at like 20 studies, um, kind of seems like things are pointing in this direction, you know, maybe we should research this more, kind of feels like this. That's like essentially like what a literature review is. It's a much different thing than like a meta-analysis of studies, where you're combining a whole bunch of cohorts into a similar data set, and then you're trying to do a, a larger sample size analysis from there or whatever, where you are testing or rejecting for a particular hypothesis, right? Fact that. Show me the actual study. I do not believe this is correct. I will not afford you some benefit to come in and make the same argument to me. If you do not have a study that is peer-reviewed and cited, 
then I'm not going to entertain I, I, so, your, so your I, opinions. So when I bring up the Cornell University study, that's... That's not a study, it's a meta-analysis. Yeah, of 55 peer-reviewed studies, whose conclusion of 52 came to the fact that there is a less than 4% detransition rate. If you go to r slash science, Tim, you can find out... <laughs> no, 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 this Come is, on. I, I, I asked you for... You're pulling up Reddit when I'm... No, no, no I'm, pulling up, I'm pulling up Reddit because Cecilia... Uh, Bernie, her last name is pronounced Jen de Jen explains and, and downplays why you're wrong about that 80 to 85% because she's the one who actually did that study. She's the one who did the study you cited. So, so Look, she explains why it's being misused. It is not true. I can say this. There are arguments about what is true all day, every day. There is arguments that M theory is wrong and that science uh, is unwilling to give up because too many scientists have dedicated their lives to it. So they argue that M theory is the, is, is, is the theory, while others are coming up with like E8 Lie group theory or whatever. I totally understand that people will decide what they think is true or not. Hence, I have a bottom line standard. If the right comes at me and says, ivermectin meta-analyses prove it works, I say, don't know, don't care. We have rejected the concept of someone analyzing a collection of studies and making determination. What our standard is, or at the very least where I'm at is, if we're going to have any basic agreement on what is or isn't, there has to be a unif- <sighs> Destiny knows, what do you, I don't even know what you're responding to. Fight standard there, which is a peer reviewed study, which is not absolute. If I have two peer reviewed studies and the establishment narrative, when I search for it says 61 to 98%, I will not accept your meta-analysis opinion, the same as I wouldn't for someone who believes ivermectin works. The ivermectin stuff wasn't built on weird meta-analyses. It was built on actual bad research and sometimes fabricated data sets. The problem with ivermectin, there's nothing wrong with a meta-analysis. There's don't think that. There's no reason to believe that meta-analyses are bad. That's not the case. Because your argument is founded upon the same basis as theirs. Okay, so first off, the meta-analysis of ivermectin actually showed that it wasn't effective at preventing or treating COVID-19. Which meta-analysis? There, there were tons of different meta-analyses that tried to compile different sets of data. I don't know why you say the meta-analysis. But... That was the actual meta-analysis of ivermectin, so it actually would back up your own uh, claims. Secondly, you and me can look at individual studies, and it can take a very long time, but we should look at regret after gender-affirming surgery, a systematic review, and meta-analysis of prevalence, which looks at, again, 27 studies and interviews 7,928 trans people across the world. World. And again, in places like Italy, USA, Brazil, you name it, that meta-analysis also found a less than 1% regret rate. You have to be able to combine multiple studies because this is something that has been so thoroughly investigated globally for so long that to ignore the science and data on well, this is, on. Is, is to flagrantly... Well, look, There's I, not been a single large-scale randomized clinical trial for puberty blockers that treat gender dysphoria. There's not been one. You, you all are very against Lupron, right? Well, I don't know much about it. I know. I, I, I so that was, was a cute topic change. I think very against is pretty strong. Okay. I'm typically like we shouldn't give. I'm saying there hasn't like, been one large scale randomized clinical trial for okay. these like, treatments. Like Lupron for when, when children go through like the early onset puberty. Yeah. And it's like an actual medical issue. Like, yes, of course. That's why saying very against something is like, well, what yeah. we're talking about is are, are we are we going to a kid who uh, are, are we dealing with an actual case of, say, endocrine disruption caused by phthalates and PCBs? Or are we dealing with a kid who's just playing with dolls and the parents are incorrect, right? And, and in that case, you would have a long process where they would have to do interviews with, again, Except, professionals who would determine right. whether or not it's appropriate. And people who and, go on and, puberty blockers, I want to add this, it's, it's for a limited amount of time. They want to do it only to be able to wrong. hold that off. No, it isn't. If you see, speak this to is, the actual th doctors on this, this, is, this you is only issue. take it. No, 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 Tim, let me finish the sentence. Come on. You brought me on your show. Let me finish this. <laughs> You only go on puberty blockers for a short amount of time before you can be put onto HRT. They do not want to keep them on puberty blockers, and that way you avoid a lot of the potential negative side effects we from that. We had Helena Kirshner on the show who walked into a Planned Parenthood and within minutes was given the maximum dose of testosterone. Anecdote. <laughs> Absolutely. Lived experience. So when I say lived, lived experience, experience happens, you say it doesn't happen. You, there, are so, there are so many arguments that both sides could be like hurling at each other here if they, if they knew more about what they were talking about. Why don't I get these topics when I go on Tim Pool's show? Why don't we talk about Cyber? And when I show up, it's like, oh, did you know the specifics of the Ahmed Aubrey case? Like, fuck, I don't fucking know if the, if the house was under construction or what kind of shoes it's fucking more. Why the fuck am I on these like esoteric topics? Why can't we talk about scientific research? Fuck me. The, um, Firstly, God, hold on. The thing that they were saying about um, that Republican guy that was like, there haven't been any large-scale randomized control trials for um, for um, 
for the uh, puberty blockers for children? Why didn't Republicans hold the same standards for hydroxychloroquine or ivermectin? That would have been number one, my first question. Now for Tim Pool here, challenging Lance, where Lance is bringing up, um, he has whatever this Cornell thing is, um, and Lance is saying, well, look, my thing is good. Um, and then Tim is bringing up an anecdote, and now Lance is saying, well, that's just an anecdote, it doesn't count. If Tim knew more about CRT, right, one of the criticisms levied at critical race theory has to do with an epistemic foundation they build on called standpoint epistemology, which actually places a very high value on individual stories and individual narratives, with the claim being that sometimes the most important unit of analysis is the individual and their um, understanding of the world, right? I think it's called it's called standpoint epistemology, um, and and for um, for Tim Pool here, he could very easily throw that and the whole CRT thing back in Lance's face if he was aware of this, but. Um, Standpoint theory is a theory for analyzing intersubjective discourses. Standpoint theory proposes that authority is rooted in individuals' personal knowledge and perspectives and the power that such authority exerts. Um, but. I'm saying it did happen. No, I'm saying it can happen. And that's, I'm and, saying you and, have to look at on, broader data. You have that's, to look at broader trends. That's the trends. issue I take, right? Yeah, and, and it wouldn't make sense if I brought up a single horror story to you and said, this is fact. It can happen. I, I, I said, we don't want that to happen, Of right? course, no one wants that to happen. But okay, then so if, we wanna happen. Under, if we want to understand how this is actually taking place around the world from an actual perspective of science, we have to look at the data. We have to look at meta studies. We have to look at the and analyze global uh, understanding of this. When it comes to Lupron, by example, Yes, it's true that Lupron is not FDA approved for the use of, uh, on cisgender children. There is a product that is FDA approved for use with children that is a puberty blocker, and it has been used for a long time for generations and decades. It's Lupron. It was just being Wait, done. No, but for that's for an kids. entirely different reason. That's for an entirely for different reason. So to say we want to prevent, children. to say we want to prevent a child from undergoing early onset puberty so that they can develop at a normal, healthy yes, rate pre, is pre entirely different. It. it is entirely different from saying. Oh, now Lance is making the Kelly Jean error, where Lance is saying, "Well, here's a drug that was used for precocious puberty, so we know everything about it." So, but it, it wasn't technically prescribed as like a puberty blocker or something. I think he's making that. We're going to administer puberty blockers because this child fears, feels they're a member of the opposite sex. But whether that's or not, an entirely but different but reason. But whether or not for, it's because you're looking is for a different is, is 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 going to be the problem, right? You, you want yes. to know whether or not its use is going to be dangerous yes. on children. Yes. And and, and, yes. and the reason for administering a certain treatment can render it dangerous. You know, so, for example, if we have been amputating people's limbs for hundreds of years, if I go into a doctor and say, "Please cut my arm off because I don't want it anymore." And he, when I, this makes me so incredibly angry. I, who is this guy actually? Sh sh what is this guy's name? Hold on, I am so curious. Because um, he has a really good understanding right now. He seems to have a really good understanding of medicine and prescriptions. Um, for instance, you can't just say that a drug is good it has to be good for a particular prescription, meaning a certain dosage, does it treat a particular effect with limited side effects. I wonder if he was aware of this for ivermectin. Um, Freedom Tunes. Does he? Does this guy have a Twitter or whatever? Because Republicans always kept saying for ivermectin, they were like, oh, it's safe, ivermectin is safe. Oh, ivermectin is safe. It's like, ivermectin is safe in the dosages that it's prescribed at to treat people with parasites. That doesn't mean that it's safe to take a 10X the dosage, which is the concentration of your blood, it would, or which is how much you would need to take for the concentration in your blood to be high enough to actually inhibit the SARS-CoV-2 virus, okay? that's. It's not the same, but he seems to have a really good understanding of this. Now, I'm so curious if he was one of those uh, ivermectin people. I'm just so curious. He cuts my arm off. That's medical malpractice. For you to jump in and go, we've been cutting people's arms off for hundreds of years. This can is I, medically approved. People I, are allowed to do this. Can I answer this? Is not, yes, absolutely. So what you're describing is called BIID, body identity uh, disorder. I, mm -hmm. I forget how it's spelled. Um, it is a real phenomenon. It's it's dysmorphic. It, yes, it's, ex dysmorphic. it's extremely rare, but we know enough about it at this point to know that people will seek out to get up operations on the black market if they have BIID. And what we found when people do that and go to the black market to have a limb removed is that it only provides a temporary amount of relief for their condition and then it returns and they have further complications from the fact that they now have a disability and or medical complications that come from My all that. My point is not about any kind of body dysmorphia about losing a limb. My point is about drawing a false <clears throat> My point is about drawing a false conclusion by a medical treatment being allowed under circumstance A but not being allowed under circumstance B. You're saying we allow it for kids who have hit precocious puberty but yes. then we don't allow it for kids who don't want I, bro. I can't believe I feel like when people disagree with something 
when people disagree with something, they actually turn into like the most like skeptical, intelligent fucking scientific researchers in the world. It's actually unbelievable. And then as soon as it's on their side, <laughs> they just like turn their brains off. These are all very good um, challenges to why a particular drug might be good in one circumstance and not another. Maybe maybe he was consistent on everything, I guess. Want to go for pu- through puberty no, 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 because they we, want to be a we member do of the allow it. It's, it's still not FDA approved. That's yeah, different. But, yeah. but you and, understand uh, my point. I, I you just, can't claim those just, things are the same. I just Google searched it real quick. Stat in 2017, 100 out of 100 with NewsGuard. Drug use to halt puberty may cause lasting health problems. More than 10,000 adverse event reports were filed with the FDA reflecting the experience of women who've taken Lupron, describing everything from brittle bones to faulty joints. You know, regarding meta, meta-analyses, like, I, I, I'm worried about, you know, giving kids things on an experimental basis. Yeah, this is a huge, long conversation, and it would be so awesome to go through each study. I would love to. It would probably take like seven hours, six hours, but we could do it, but like not tonight, unfortunately. Well, so let me, let me ask you but, though. But, like, I, but I want to keep down this path because I think yeah, we're, making, me, we're let, making good progress Let me here. ask you a question, of right? Like, <laughs> we're making good progress here. Yeah, so I took some ivermectin. And my COVID went away. It might be because I'm healthy, but- Wow, Joe Rogan is so unhealthy. I can't- What did he do? He cured his COVID with methods that the CDC has never recommended. Oh, you mean ivermectin? Huh? No, being in shape. (laughs) Okay. Like Jazz Jennings is sterile, right? I don't know much about Jazz Jennings. Jazz Jennings. She's, she's a reality TV star, right? Jazz Jennings. <laughs> Strong man voice, I'm, true. I'm, I'm concerned <laughs> that Jazz isn't trans. Uh, because, That's not for us to say. Uh, I didn't say. I said I'm concerned that Jazz is not trans, right? Mm-hmm. And the reason is Jazz is dating women now, right? So then Jazz what would What does be, that have to do with being trans? Well, Jazz would then be a biological male dating women at the age of 23. What does right? that have to do with being trans? So it has to do with whether or not Jazz made the decision for themselves or the parent made it when they were three years old. So the question is, we want to avoid a John Money type Wait, situation, what? right? I'm Where so confused. Where you have these two kids and I didn't the doctor follow that. told. I didn't follow that train of thought at all. That was, I have no idea what just happened there. I missed, I must have missed something there. I, I'm completely lost. One of the young boys, he was actually a girl and then forced him to live as a girl, ultimately resulting in his suicide and then the death of the brother as well. It's we literally it gay happen. equals trans. And so that okay. did happen already, and we know that happened. So we have to be careful about taking a three-year-old and then raising them and telling them they're female, because then if they start exhibiting traditional uh, uh, you know, gender behaviors, there may be some concern. For instance, Jazz stopped dilating. And that was the big controversy over the past few weeks, the mother going on TV saying she would force Jazz to do it. If Jazz is saying, I'm not gonna, and the mother saying, do it or I'll wring your neck, which is a, a quote, and then Jazz is not dating women, we're starting to see a pattern that may be concerning because it follows the John Money situation. Oh, Whether or not Jazz is trans or not, my concern is, uh-oh, what if? And that means there may be children who are gonna be pushed down a path that ultimately leads to their suicide because their parents can't make the decision for them, but they did. So the data overwhelmingly shows that if you give children gender affirming care, especially if you have loving and accepting parents who accept children's actual gender identity, it reduces the rates of suicide dramatically. In the case of a parent who affirms their child's gender, it can reduce suicide rates of up to 93% in some studies. It's it's not a case of- uh, This might sound cringe. I don't mean to sound cringe. I don't like, I don't feel like the suicide arguments are that good. I think you gotta be careful about some of that because it really does sometimes feel like hostage taking like if you don't do this they're all gonna kill themselves we're all gonna kill ourselves if you don't do this like it might be true even and there probably is a space and a broad discussion for it which i guess you could argue this is a broad discussion but like i feel like the optics on that are really rough sometimes because it does just feel like a hostage taking situation more often than not, these are children who are approaching their parents saying they think this is something happening to them and parents pushing back and being like, no, this is wrong. You're just a tomboy. Oh, this is, you know, this is not you. This is so, blah, blah, blah. And you don't go into a doctor and all of a sudden they're like, here's Lupron. They do. No, but they don't, Tim. The but, average but like, amount oh, of time, oh, 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 oh. the average amount say, of time. You can't is, say they don't when we've had the anecdotes. They do. Call it an anecdote. It's an I'm anecdote. telling you it does happen. Of course, but that's an anecdote. We have to look at so data. don't say science, it doesn't statistics. happen. Well, it happens, but that doesn't mean it. It's a broad it should trend. not happened. Right, but that's, okay, this, this is asinine. So, l- 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 we, we have to talk about what actually asinine. occurs via the numbers, right? That's, that's what matters. Like, I, I have here the largest U.S. transgender survey ever done. It's in 20, uh, 2015 to 21,598 participants. And this covers people in childhood, adolescence, 
and adulthood, and it has all the results you're looking for. So let me ask you a question. Uh, why do you we, think we're seeing the incre uh, a rapid increase in the past few years I of, can explain that of, as well. mm -hmm. of young people identifying as trans? Okay, can, can I answer that? Can afterwards? you read the study, Yeah, yeah, please. of course. So it shows the 2015 U.S. Transgender Survey of 21,598 participants that with hormone therapy, psychological distress for children reduces by 222%. Late adolescence, 153%. Adulthood, 81%. How can something reduce by 200%? Am I retarded? What does that mean? Do you remember how it works in POE? Reduces by 222%. He said reduces. You can only reduce. Oh, it reduces by 222% versus some other metric. What a weird, I think that's what he is saying. Okay, sorry, Jesus. A few years I can of, explain that of, as well. mm -hmm. of young people identifying as trans. Okay, can, can I answer that Can afterwards? you read the study, Yeah, yeah, please. of course. So it shows the 2015 US Transgender Survey of 21,598 participants that with hormone therapy, psychological distress for children reduces by 222%. Late adolescents, 153%. Adulthood, 81%. Suicidal ideation for children goes down 135%. For uh, adolescents, 62%. And for adults, 21%. Like okay, it's gotta be compared compared to something and he's just not saying it correctly i guess that's, that's this is what he's saying doesn't it like doesn't it doesn't make sense you can't reduce something by more than 100 percent uh but okay that, that is dramatic is that, this that the is stanford dumb. medical school survey analysis done by jack turban uh, -oh. uh i don't know the person okay. who did it Let okay it um but in terms of the the increase uh -oh. tim of, of people because there's a because there was a study done by stanford medical school that very closely fits the description of what you've just read out there, which is very ascientific and what well, data that I, is collected. I, 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 yeah, okay. so just just please find the source of that. Because I, I, I want to pull that apart, yeah, yeah, but I want to be sure, sure, sure that I know you're talking about that yeah, yeah, yeah. study. I'm, I'm curious as to why you think it's it's increasing so much. What's that, what's that signify? The history of left-handedness. This is the oh. history of left-handedness in the United States. Mm -hmm. Do you see what happens here? It, it, it levels out. It goes up and up levels and out. Levels. We used to pe uh, we used to treat people who were left-handed as satanic, as the devil, all that kind of shit. Do you remember that? <laughs> he brought. He actually printed out and brought a paper with him. <laughs> Why couldn't Homie have been more prepared on all the other research he did instead of having this is like the paper that he wanted to print out that he was so proud of? Fucking kill me, dude. Uh, right, and that's why there was a lot of people who didn't record themselves as being left-handed, and then boom, when we stopped doing that after the 1880s and in the 1900s, it spiked. Now, this spike isn't because there was a whole bunch of indoctrination, or Alex Jones was like, oh, left-handed ideology, everyone has become left-handed. This has nothing to do with that. This is naturally how many left-handed people there were, and then it plateaued. We are in a, in a situation right now where it is safer than ever for people to come out, and, and if they're queer, bisexual, whatever it is. So the answer to this here, um, the the correct answer to this, Leafy wants to talk to you. Uh, no, <laughs> um, I'm good. Um, the answer to this here is there's no. I don't think there's any social pressure to become left-handed. There's no social credit or validation for being left-handed. Being left-handed is not a way to express yourself, right? I don't think comparing left-handedness to trans more trans people is necessarily a one-to-one -one thing. But we'll see how Tim responds. And because of that, they feel safer expressing that. That's why Gen oh, wow. Z of all generations. I was concerned there was a trans genocide. Yeah. So he, here's this is this is the actual statistics on people increasing. You can see the red one. Mm. That that is Gen Z. <laughs> that is the amount. <laughs> Why did he bring? Sorry. Amount of people who in Gen Z, it's skyrocketing. It looks so, like they're so identifying you, more than ever because so you, their generation feels more comfortable talking so about this kind of stuff. So you don't more, think yeah. that there's yeah, like right. a, a trans genocide or anything like that? I don't think that there's a trans indoctrination that is coming through media. Genocide, is, I said. It. I, yes, and I'm saying that I don't think there's a trans indoctrination coming through media that is programming kids to become trans. I think that's ridiculous. So and, if you, and if you want to change but, topics to talk about trans genocide, we can move on to that. But, but that, it, you, you it, asked me specifically, why, right, is there right. a, why is there a spike? Yeah. That is why. Okay, so my follow-up is, you think trans people feel safer than ever? No. Right now there's over 400 different bills being pushed in the United States that is directly targeting trans people. So they don't feel safe? They, of course they don't. So then why- So then why are they all coming out then? Uh, how does he not see where he's getting walked to? 
Oh, the intellectually honest answer is there's probably are some number of people that feel safe coming out. That's probably true, but it's probably not explanatory of everything because some of those numbers are huge. Are they coming out if they don't feel safe? They have more access because that generation, Generation uh, Z, uh, has a lot more acceptance towards trans people than older people who pass laws, draconian people who pass laws. The boomers are the ones running the show right now. They're still the ones in government. They're still the ones passing laws. There's very few Generation uh, Z okay. in government or parliament. He got you out want, of it. You want to know what, what I think? Uh -oh. I think there is a trans genocide. Okay. And I think it's you. Okay. Because you're sterilizing a lot of these people. How so? I mean, you're they're literally sterilizing them. The, the surgery to remove the gonads, hysterectomies, and puberty and cross-sex hormones and puberty blockers have a high rate of sterilization. I mean, first of all, uh, removal of the gonads in the uterus is an absolute sterilization, and then puberty blockers have a very high rate, uh, and uh, cross-sex hormones have an extremely high rate of sterilizing the individual. So these people can no longer reproduce. That's genocide. Is this, is this the joke you're gonna go for? Is joke? You are removing these people's ability to reproduce. Mm. And if they're a young age and they haven't had the ability, like for instance, Jazz Jennings can never have kids. Jazz Jennings also, and this this uh, probably part of your studies, can't actually feel any set, like sexual uh, feeling of, of any kind. Do you have any idea how weird this sounds right now? Like why? why? I don't. I don't. I. This is so. These are the challenging. Mo don't stun my guy. You fucking loser. These are the challenging moments in a debate um, that are very hard to identify. One hundred percent. Oh, I got a push, and thank God. Um, you can, I'm not gonna say that you can never be smug. I think that smugness is very effective when applied effectively. <laughs> um, but I think you have to earn your smugness. You have to You have to have done a good enough job in the conversation for you to act a little bit incredulous because you've already kind of like gotten to that point to where it's like, bro, you're getting shut down. Like, are you real right now? You really feel this way? Come on, dude. But the problem is, is if you haven't earned that right to be smug yet, you just come off as being very pearl clutchy. Like, you're gonna make this, this is the joke you're gonna go for right now. Like, if you haven't actually earned that, if you haven't done a good enough job winning over a, a chunk of the audience to believe that your argument is correct, and you start pulling out the, I can't believe you've said that, it just comes off as pearl clutchy. I personally don't think that he has, but maybe some other people listening disagree. Why are you obsessed what, what, with what, a stranger's what? genital pleasure? Sexual health is a really important marker of life. Um, like we, like it's actually, it's an issue sometimes that we don't talk about it. Um, so a really good example of this, where it's kind of sad that we don't have good conversations about it, have to do, for instance, with disabled people. A really big indicator of a decrease in quality of life for disabled people sometimes can be inability to have ordinary sexual function. Um, and the difficulties of having those conversations publicly make it really hard for us to even talk about what would need to be done for people to access um, you know, like greater levels of uh, care related to stuff. But um, yeah, the I don't think the pearl clutching works very well here. But hey, that's just my opinion. I don't know. One, two, four. Oh, that's so nice. Sure, that's so weird. That's so bizarre. That was very weird yourself. You You're guys are all right. No, no. So I'm talking about adults who engage in activities, which is a large portion of the global economy, whether you like it or not. Sure. Sex sells, they say. And when I say this person will never have this ability, you go, how weird is that? It's weird for you to fixate on a stranger's genital pleasure. That's strange. That's so bizarre. Well, right? like, she's why, public why? about it. But, that's but see, that's, you're not making an argument right now, is my point. I'm not. I'm saying it's weird. It's not an argument. Yeah, I'm that's, just like, that's, I, that's an observation. So you're trying to make a, an appeal to emotion Did, and an appeal no, to shame. No, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just giving you my genuine thought when you say something like that. Like, well, that why, that it was a really fucking pathetic attempt at trying to make an argument. Why should we talk about that? Why, why should we discuss whether or not she has genital feeling? That's not important. It's not. She, I, that, it's not in my business. So let's focus then on the sterilizing of the individual. Do sure. you, are you okay with that? I don't think Tim is aware of like the stigma around like disabled people and sexual health and function. That it is. It is totally okay to focus on that, and that it sh that should be an important part of conversation. Um, like my guess is, is there's probably forms of like. There's probably plenty of forms of female genital mutilation or ways to mutilate a clitoris that probably wouldn't have very many adverse health impacts on a woman. That'd be my guess. Um, but like, w like why? Like the clitoris, I'm pretty sure is the only organ like in in anybody's body anywhere that it only solely exists for sexual pleasure. But like, then do we not like? But but why do we care so much about female genital mutilation? Right? Sexual pleasure is a pretty integral part of a lot of people's lives. 
Um, it's just really weird to just hand wave that and be like, who cares? I don't know. When, who's sterilizing people? Jazz Jennings is sterile. Why are we going back to Jazz Jennings? I don't, because Jazz I don't know anything famous. about her. Because Jazz is a famous individual on cable television. So if she is sterile for whatever reason, what does that have to do with me? Why, why does that concern me? Do why should I pass legislation? the sterilization to- of teenagers? This is such a weird way to frame this. Like, it's, what, you gotta, uh, I hate, dude, I hate this guy so much. You are removing teenagers' ability to have children. I'm not doing anything. I'm not a doctor, Tim. You I, don't I hate that he weasels so hard, too. I'm not doing it. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not a doctor. Trust us. Of all the shit you've said in this conversation, that is the last thing you need to say. There is not a single motherfucker in this audience right now confusing you for a doctor. Don't worry. I have the ability to do this. Right? I support people having access to health care. Of course. Why would I want to prevent that just because do some people agree? have bigotry towards them? Let's try again. You seem scared sure. of this. Yep, he is. Do you believe that parents and doctors should have the ability to remove the ability of a child for, for future reproduction? They should have the ability to give them access to health care. Of course they should. So why do you keep you're, saying you're, like you're implying that every single gender affirming care results in sterilization? I didn't that, say is, that. that is not true at all. I said the, the removal there's of There's also the, people who are trans that never get bottom surgery. You seem very scared of this. It's scaring you. How, yes. how am I afraid to? Because you keep deflecting when he I ask does. you. So Jazz Jennings is a specific deflecting. example. Let's try. I, let's try this. Let's, I, let's, Tim, let's, let's Tim, slow down and go one point at a time. You right? think I'm deflecting because I don't want to keep talking about someone's genital pleasure who's a stranger. Nice I'm saying try, it, should, I sh- I'm nice saying try, it shouldn't concern nice you. Try, it shouldn't concern nice anyone, Tim. Your that, appeal to emotion is not going to work on me. I'm asking you a science. <laughs> I know I can appeal logic, to your emotion. I'm trying a logic-based question sure. about the future of, of these people. I believe you are genociding them. I believe you and cool. you intend on genociding autistic individuals. I genuinely believe that. Who's autistic in this? A large portion of trans kids are autistic, namely females. So this is an issue in that young, lesbian, autistic females are a large portion of those who are transgender. Do you, and have, do you have data on this? Do, do, I mean, come on, bro. Do you have data on what you've, you've brought up? You couldn't give me one study, but yes, I've, I'll I've given you. you not only studies, meta studies. I've given you multiple meta studies on this. I, I have given you a surplus of information on this topic. <laughs> Make up six, six times more likely to have autism, according to NPR.org. I'm pretty sure the autistic thing is pretty well known. I think um, there's a lot of different types of, would you call autism a comorbidity? I'm not sure if you would, but I thought the autism thing was pretty well known, especially for girls, but okay, maybe not. So yeah. I think you're trying to genocide autistic people. I, I, I literally, so I, six I don't, I, times more. You, what's the percentage of? That's what I asked you. Six times, sixty percent. That's not how that works. That's not. You don't. You don't. Six hundred. Sorry. No, that's not how that works. You're either. saying what percent of them? What percentage are trans? of trans people happen to be autistic lesbians? That was your claim. That a large portion are. I'm saying I don't know any statistics on that. I've never heard that before. Well, so uh, the first thing I pulled up was that transgender and non-binary, pe- non-binary people are up to six times more likely to have autism, right? Right, but that's not answering the question. Why would autism be a comorbidity? I just don't know if it's considered a comorbidity. I'm not sure. I don't know. Like, if that's like a comorbidity, I don't know. Question, yeah. And your question is what portion of... Oh, let me Google it again. Because I, I thought that was sufficient in, in you know... Uh, 24%. So that's not the majority, even if that stat is true. Six times more common. That's 24%. a huge percentage. That's still not the majority, even if that statistic was true. Yeah, no, I, that, the majority is... So 25, 24% so, of trans people are autistic, according to that data, and 6% of... So, so what I think straight. is, I think that there, is, there are people who hate people with Down syndrome, and in Iceland, they've actually publicly avowed or, or, or praised their eradication of people with Down syndrome. I think that's horrifying. Like... You can you can be you can be okay with it. I'm not saying you're not allowed to believe that. This is that, pearl right? clutching from. You, you don't have to have the same Tim morals. Now, I just think it's wrong to genocide like people with Down syndrome. You know what I mean? You have completely derailed this conversation. You're, you're assuming that I'm pro people having uh, abortions for people who have Down syndrome when I, no, we're talking about. I'm not saying you do. I'm saying okay. in Iceland, they've what stated they. What does this have to do with trans rights? Right. So we see a higher rate of autistic people uh, uh, autism in trans kids. You, you we said, also you said then, it makes it the majority. It does not even based well, on the I source you pulled up. Okay, twenty four percent. Okay, uh, I still believe that this is very much an effort. I, I think I think the left is intent on genociding trans people. In what way? Removing their ability to reproduce. How are they removing their ability By to reproduce? By cutting off their him? testicles and removing their That is uteruses. not the only operation that is done. There are nope. trans people who maintain their same genitals as before. Right. Not everyone has to decide to get bottom surgery. That's a choice and, they should make. And cross-sex hormones do have a high rate of causing sterilization. It can, but it doesn't always. 
Also, and you can be like, trans and sure. not get any operations at all. So I think you are, so like I'm in favor. Like the defense is here, like, Lance is trying to play this game where he hides behind empirics and philosophy at the same time, or like actual, like resolutely, like right or wrong statements. Yeah, you have to own. You either have to own it or or disavow it. Like, is it okay to make some trans kids sterile um, for supposedly for medical treatment? Right, which you can own. You can say that. Like, there are probably some operations that we would allow people to have, even if it had a risk of making them sterile. But you can't do this. Like, well, it doesn't sterilize everybody. That's like that's like the weakest sounding argument in the world. In favor of making sure these people can always have families and have kids. Right. Your position, whether you support the moral, moral issue of, of or not, results in many of them being stale. For instance, the reason I use Jazz Jennings as an example because this is a person on television with millions of followers who wrote a book and told kids about this journey. The journey that Jazz Jennings went on resulted in a complete inability to have a family and have children. I think that's terrifying because Jazz was not old enough to understand the implications of that. Jazz will never have a family. Jazz, the, 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 the genetics of Jazz Jennings is over. That is one of the most horrifying things to me as a human being, because I think genocide is wrong, right? So Tim has laid out his whole philosophical argument here. Lance has to counter with something besides just saying, well, I don't want to talk about somebody's genitals or well, that doesn't happen all the time. There has to be a different counter from him here. It can't just be these two arguments. Why should her ability to be uh, or have reproductive function why should that concern you? For the same reason the Uyghur Muslims in China concern yeah, me. That's like an easy one. Issue. Of course, you can. There's plenty of reasons why children's reproductive functions. When we're talking about like medical policy concern, that's such an easy. That's such an easy give me for Tim Pool here. There has to be. A, he needs a different. China, for instance. But has, what if she never wants to have kids? That's you don't something know you that. For yourself. You don't know, dude. Like Lance is complete. You understand that Lance is completely lost to see here. He's just like whatever the first thing. Well, um, whoa, 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 whoa. what if they don't want to have kids ever? The twelve-year-old? You're telling me the twelve? Do the twelve-year-old ever want to have kids? What kind of stupid fucking question is that? Like, of later in life. Exactly. So why is it our it. business? Because it's been <laughs> removed before Jazz could have the ability. But to again, make the conclusion that has nothing to do with us. She could just. That has nothing to do with us. Can we go rape kids? And then, like, when you barge in, I'm like, bro, why are you watching me? This has nothing to do with you. Like, this is one of the stupidest. Um, uh, counters, what am I looking for? There's a word I'm looking for. This is one of the stupidest rejections. Um, what? There's a specific word I'm looking for here. Fuck, I can't think of it right now. Rebuttals. This is one of the stupidest rebuttals I've ever heard in my entire life. Like, why are you, why do you care about like legal or, or medical policy relating to children? It's, it's such a stupid question. Like, bruv, wh what do you mean? Decides to never want to have kids. He's never spoken to somebody that disagrees with him in his entire fucking life. And he decides to jump into one of the final bosses of these kinds of debates, Tim Pool, who probably talks about trans people like every other fucking show for the past month on his podcast. Like, come on, dude. That's something you determine for yourself later in life. Exactly. So why is it our business? Because it's been removed before Jazz could have the ability but to again, make the conclusion. But again, that has nothing to do with us. She could decide to never want to have kids, and that's fine and valid. Right, so my morals would be that a, a society protects the children because there are certain things you can't know until you're at least 24 or older when your brain is fully developed, which is why we don't allow people to drink and do, dr like, do certain drugs, whatever sure. drugs are legal, until they're 21. So for me, I'm like, if you can't drink till you're, eight, till you're 21, if there's like, you can't smoke till you're 18, this society absolutely recognizes you can't drive till a certain age. That uh, the reason that the driving age is, is what it is. One of the arguments made. I, think I also I don't like that. Um, I don't like that. Like Lance is setting up Tim Pool. Like Tim Pool must feel like a fucking genius, right? Like you got a guy like Lance. He's like, why should we care about children? Oh well, here's a bunch of good reasons why you care about children. Uh, why should we care about like sterilized children? Well, here's some reason why you might care about something. Well, um, what if it's not affecting us directly? Well, here's why that matters, right? Like Tim's got to feel like a genius here because he's got like a, a high schooler asking him the most easy softball questions of the fucking world. Like holy shit. I think it was in Illinois is that risk taking is a lot higher in youth than it is in older people. So the argument is once you're past 16, you go through driver's ed, that helps uh, control for the higher risk taking of, of younger people. So we said an age I limit. can't believe Lincoln thinks Lance owned Tim in this podcast. Granted, he said he was a moron in three topics, but he was a moron overall. For someone who's 10 years old to be put on Lupron and then cross-sex hormones, 
they will never develop the ability to reproduce. So in the instance of Jazz, again, a famous individual who's very influential with millions of followers, there was never the ability to reproduce developed, which caused complications. Complications aside, that's Jazz's personal business. But the, the puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones did sterilize Jazz, 100% sterilization. Jazz was not old enough to understand the implications of that. So I, I have concerns about having children, <coughs> whether they choose to or their parents choose to, I think that's genocide. I can kind of see your argument because if a kid was straight, a straight kid, just a kid, and they were like a 12-year-old girl, and she was like, I don't want to have babies when I'm older. And the mom was like, okay, then we'll sterilize you right now. Yeah, obviously that's wrong. Bro, even Ian is getting fucking layups on you because of how fucking dog shit these arguments are, bro. Oh, God. Oh, and they went and had the kid had a hysterectomy. That's, I think that's illegal. I don't know, but I would imagine society needs to protect uh, little, little kids yeah. from crazy parents that are like, just because a 12 year old says they don't have babies later. So the um, fact that it is sterilizing as a byproduct, I think should be, should be taken into account with the whole procedure. I think I that's think, still uh, something that comes down to the individual and what they choose to do. And that's it, not true. It doesn't come down to the individual. You can't rape a kid. You can't take a nine year old to get in to get a hysterectomy. You probably shouldn't be able to take a six year old in to get cross hormone treatment. You can't say it's up to the individual. We don't leave anything up to kids. They're literally our fucking slaves. Kids have less rights than slaves in some ways, right? You can't, like, they're children. You own them. <laughs> they can't do shit without you. Like, what do you mean? It's not up to the individual. And if someone is like, I want to have gender affirming care, knowing the risks, then why is that my business? It's, the it's and there's, if he, if he ever, there's even, there is a good argument in here. If he would just shift the autonomy over to the adult, his argument would go from being the worst argument ever to one of the strongest arguments ever. You should say, I don't want to threaten the autonomy. It's not my business what a parent does with their child. And then now you've got the strongest argument. If you want to teach your child how to be a good Christian, if you want to go through all the sacraments, if you want to do whatever form of homeschooling education with your child is, you feel is necessary, that should be your right. And if a parent is talking to a doctor, a licensed medical professional that we have deemed worthy to be called a physician in the United States of America, and they want to go on some gender affirming care, whether my child is 10, 12, 15, 17, that decision should be left between the parent and the doctor. And libertarian Tim Pool, why would you want the government to intervene in a medical decision? Do you do you think that parents shouldn't be allowed to get their children, uh, you know, ADHD medication if the child is underage? Do you think that there's no form of likes it, right? That, that's a much stronger argument, but not this whole like, leave it to the individual. The individual is a child, the child doesn't know, the child doesn't care. <sighs> the same thing with someone who wants to have well, a, a surgery that can have other complications, that's not my business. If someone had uh, an appendix inflamed and they had to have their appendix out, there are potential complications that come from that, but I'm not gonna- But we wouldn't, let a, we wouldn't let a 12 year old decide that they need to get their appendix removed. Just like we wouldn't let a 12 year old say, I need my tonsils taken out. I don't even know if a 12 year old can make the decision to have their wisdom teeth taken out. I don't think you are even old enough yet. But I don't know if a 12 year old can go to a dentist and do their own medical treatment. Like. I prevent them from having health care and saying that you can't have a right to get your appendix out because every major medical association in the United States agrees that that is the best way to treat appendicitis. And in this case, when we're talking about trans people, every single medical association in the United States agrees on gender affirming care. Then you know what they every should do? Every single one. You know what they should do? They should produce one single randomized controlled trial for puberty blockers and cross-sex cross -sex hormones to show that it's safe and effective. But they have not. So it's not healthcare, it's experimentation. You talk about giving kids health care. That's not health care. Health care repairs something which is broken. You use the example of somebody's appendix not functioning properly. Yeah, of course. Okay, yes. So, so what you have to do in that instance is intervene so that the body can function as, as it is intended to. Destroying somebody's ability to procreate is demolishing the organ that you're claiming to treat, right? You're but, destroying but, the biological function rather than helping to improve it. That's not healthcare. I want, I want to pull this up too. It's from University of Utah because I was there reading are about. There so this many week. ways to respond to that too. Recently, uh. it's, it, it goes on to mention that hormone replacement therapy can make you sterile, uh, and that it's important. It can. Uh, it's important to pr preserve your sperm. It says if you're trans feminine, uh, otherwise the hormone therapy may make you make it impossible for you to have biological children. 
Uh, if someone is put on puberty blockers and then cross-sex hormones as a child, they will never have the ability to preserve their, their reproductive functions. So if you're put on puberty blockers, they are reversible. You can stop being on puberty blockers and you can still maintain a lot of things that you were worried about being taken away. When it comes to With Jazz Jennings specifically, um, she's actually made statements about this because, you know, I, I was just looking this up. Jazz Jennings says, I don't regret my transition at all. When I was 11, I started male puberty and I was put on hormone blockers. Those blockers saved my life and continued to save the lives of so many youth out there. If I was forced to go through male puberty, it would have been devastating. Even more so, taking estrogen through hormone replacement allowed my body to develop how I wanted. Well, I blossomed funny. into a young woman, eventually got bottom surgery, and now living as a proud woman today. What does that have to do with me? Why would I want to take that away from someone else? What well, year was it? She we're made talking that, that She made this on March 31st. She made it recently because that video came out where the mom said she was going to force the dilator. And then Matt Walsh jazz. went hard and Jazz yeah. was like, hey, Matt. And then so Matt was like, sorry, Jazz. Th hey. th there's, a, there's a lot of questions around the morality of this. The left likes to refer, defer instantly to purity arguments, which I find fascinating considering the left typically has a low uh, purity uh, uh, rating when it comes to moral foundations. For example, when you said it's really weird talking about someone's genitals, it's a purity argument, which the left typically never makes. That's why I said it's a very weird thing for you to do. Approaching this from an academic perspective, we would make a few arguments about whether or not a person can truly understand they've lost the ability to reproduce if they've never had it in the first place, the, the, the psychological and the philosophical, imp philosophical implications of stripping away a person's ability to reproduce before they were old enough to even know what that was. So uh, for example, if you take an adult human female or male and remove their genitals by force, they will be very, very upset extremely upset. In fact, it's a form of torture in a lot of countries. It's, it's meant to terrify. If you took away their ability to feel sexual satisfaction, it's a form of torture. In fact, female circumcision is, is horrifying to the world, and it actually was huge controversies up in Dearborn, Michigan, because what it would do is it would result in women who are as adults could not feel anything when, and, and they were effectively used as like objects for their husbands. So in making an academic argument, we would say, Jazz Jennings does not understand, and that's fine if Jazz is happy, that's great. The, the, the argument into, into the greater is, Jazz will never have kids, fact statement. I think it's wrong to take away that from someone who doesn't understand what it what is. What if they don't want kids? They will just- That's, why does he say that? Well, what if they don't want kids? Then they can make the decision as an adult. You can't know that as a child, bro. Decide that when they're an adult and have yes. assessed the circumstances. Correct. But Jazz can't actually feel any of this. Jazz, jazz can't feel, uh, this, is a, this was a study, there was a doctor who came out, did a, did a Zoom video on it, specifically I think referring to jazz, that jazz will never experience any adult satisfaction or desire. And so the question then becomes, why did jazz get bottom surgery? Uh, my question, why do you think jazz got bottom surgery? Oh, I don't have to ask that, she explained why. What, what she, 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 said that she said that she's satisfied with it. That should be say? the extent of it. What did she say? Um, I don't regret my transition at all. When I was 11, I started male puberty and I was put on hormone blockers. Those blockers saved my life and continue to save the lives of so many youth out there. If I was forced to go through male puberty, it would have been devastating. Even more, taking estrogen through hormone replacement allowed my body to develop how I wanted. I blossomed into a young woman, eventually got bottom surgery, and I'm living as a proud woman today. Yes, I do struggle with mental health and always have, but it's not because I transitioned, and it's unfortunately something many LGBTQ plus people face. Why? Because it has a lot to do with hate and a lack of acceptance that we receive in society, like I was saying before. So, so, so to all of you speaking about our mental health for views and calling our families abusers, for supporting our transition, you are the only abusers. So what was the purpose of the bottom surgery? It affirmed her uh, of, uh, gender. Of anyone, of anyone. It, it affirmed her gender. What does that mean, affirmed a gender? So you have, and all of us have, a gender identity that we want to express in one way or another. And with hers, she affirmed her gender through the process of getting bottom surgery to look more and feel more like a woman. Why do you think Jazz stopped dilating? I don't know. Probably because it hurt. But if, if this was an important part of affirmation, you'd think Jazz would maintain it. That's not for me to decide. That's someone else's own identity. It's, so, again, that's why it's weird to me to try and, and impose this upon someone else. Like, to try and say, like, uh, you're disgusted at the fact that she can't have kids or something like that. It's like, I don't know if she ever wants kids because I don't know who she is. But that's a decision for her to make between her and her doctor. <sighs> has nothing to do with me. Why, why would any uh, trans child get uh, a bottom surgery? Again, to affirm their gender. So what? As, as part of gender affirming okay. care. Why would and children don't get bottom surgery, by the way. It's usually over 18. Well, Jazz, Jazz was, was 17. Yeah, and right. Jazz and was and so there are exceptions, and yes, that, but that, average, the, average um, age is over Kim 18. Was, um, was like Boston, Boston's Children's Hospital has never done that on anyone under the age of 18. The average age for bottom surgery is over 18 years old. So overwhelmingly. Why, why would, uh, I, I just don't understand why the, um, it's not penile and virgin vaginoplasty. I don't know what it's called because Jazz didn't have a penis. 
uh, what's the purpose of making uh, a, 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 the, the hole, the space? What's the purpose of, of, of that? What's the, the operation is because it gives them, uh, it affirms their gender through the process of having a similar genitalia to a cis woman. So what's the purpose of it? I just explained that. So the purpose of it is just feeling, just the emotion. No, the purpose of it is, it is part of affirming who they are through a surgery that makes them look and feel more like a, a version of a woman that they want to be. You don't have to. There's not a template. That's not the only version a woman can be. There's other versions of how a woman can be and look, but that's the version that she wanted. So what I'm trying to understand is why create a permanent wound for the purpose of a man to have sex with in order to affirm the identity of someone who can't feel any of that? Well, first off, I have no idea about the actual sensations that people experience after these kind of surgeries, but that's not my business. And the second thing would be, <laughs> I don't believe it's a wound. I believe it's an operation to have a genital change. That's it. So to describe it as a wound is just very crude. But it's factually a wound, right? That's, I'm, I'm trying to avoid the right, the right calls it a mutilation or an abomination. I'm not saying that. But it's it's still crude to just call it a wound. After, it's, after there, it's healed, I'm sure there's no more wounds no, no, or scars it, it or anything. They have to dilate for the rest of their lives because it is a wound. Like, I'm being academic. I'm not trying to be insulting to anybody. The right calls it mutilation. Uh, he probably knows more about this. What is it? Penile vagio, whatever the fuck the surgery is called than Lance does. Mutilation and abomination. Uh. The reason they have to use dilators for the rest of their lives is because it is factually a wound. But you're asking me a question that I can't answer because I'm not this individual. I don't know why someone would want to get that surgery because I don't, I'm cis and I don't experience these kind of things. But if someone and wants to, great. but Tim, if, and, and if someone wants to and it makes them feel better and improves their quality of life, then why do we have to get in the way of that? Well, can, can right, I so, so my, here my position is for adults, I agree. And I had the argument with Tom Fitton. He said it should be banned outright. So I disagree. Mm -hmm. But and overwhelmingly, when you look at the data, when it happens to children, it improves their psychological distress. It removes and lowers suicidal ideation. That, it shows that, in the it, data that it helps them. That's not true, man. So the, no, 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 the, the it, studies it you have here, that I, the study you have absolutely here, the largest true. one. The, so first of all, as I mentioned, there have been no controlled randomized trial, but the largest study for, you for cited there, the, the largest study that you cited there does not say what you think it says. The Stanford University one, it was 27,000 people who were surveyed in 2015, and then there were two analyses done of these studies by Jack Turbin. And he lumped data together and did a few manipulative things to like get the results he wanted, but there's two very important things to mention, which is firstly, this study was based on convenience sampling. So they were speaking with people who were sent to them by LGBTQ advocacy groups and groups that they reached out to. So you're already not getting an unbiased population sample there. And then they were determining whether that person received puberty blockers and mm -hmm. other such treatments or hadn't, but they didn't go over the reasons. In fact, the people who hadn't received puberty blockers or those kinds of treatments didn't receive them because they weren't allowed to. And one of the requirements for being able to receive that kind of treatment is some level of psychological stability, which means the people who weren't on puberty blockers in that study were more likely to be psychologically unstable, which we would... And Lance probably... My guess is if somebody told Lance, this is a good study, use this one. They won't have anything for it. Lance probably doesn't know any of the details of this study because he wasn't able to talk about it at all before. And now this guy knows a few. And now Lance is going to have to try to wiggle his way around. But ultimately, he's going to have to completely and totally see this point. So whoever thought he won because he brought studies, this is going to be him having to walk back every single thing he had relating to that paper that he so proudly printed out and brought earlier would expect to produce a higher suicide rate, but that wasn't controlled for. On top of that, the data actually shows that the men who are on estrogen were more likely to become suicidal. That but what he true. ended up doing, that's true, what he ended up doing was lumping them together. So he said, people on cross-sex hormones are less likely to commit suicide because according to the sample he had of women, that was true enough to overcompensate for the increased likelihood of suicidality in the men, and he just threw them all together as if a man taking estrogen is the same thing as a woman taking testosterone, and we could expect the same medical outcomes. So, and I'm saying that's bullshit. So, so to respond to you, I do have a um, number of peer-reviewed studies. He doesn't know, so he's got to, now he has to jump off that point. Oh, instead of trying to overwhelm, you should have found one meta-analysis or at least been really familiar with Cornell's literature review. Like, I, at least read the abstract. Although, if you're going into Tim Pools, you probably actually read the whole study. Or at least the abstract and the methodology. Um, or at least, like, skim through it. It's probably not like a hundred-page paper, right? The Cornell thing probably isn't too long to, to skim it, at least. But, um, uh Related to this? And if they're as good as that one, I'm telling you they're trash.
Mental Health Outcomes and Transgender and Non-Binary Youth Receiving Gender Affirming Care. February 25th, 2022. This one shows kids who received puberty blockers and hormone therapy had 60% lower odds of moderate or severe depression, 73% lower odds of suicidality. Gender Identity Five Years After Social Transition. This one is in the American Academy of Pediatrics, peer-reviewed, July 13th, 2022. Between 317 youth, they found 94% binary uh, transgender stayed the same. Only 2.5% reverted to reverting as cisgender, 3.5% as non-binary trans. A UK 2019 study of 3,398 people who had gender affirming care found that only 0.47% regretted it. Another one, the impacts of strong parental support for trans youth found that parents who support trans youth, this was 433 participants, double blind study, 93% reduction in reported suicides. So uh, why do you- and why, I, why, well, why Hold on, and I think we can all have the good faith that you did as much work fact checking those studies as you did the one I just tore apart, but I didn't have time to go into every single bit of statistical yeah, information you would bring here. Th- th- this, is, this is the problem problem with like like you mentioned going the studies back and forth or whatever so that's why I'm, I'm fine with I'm not here to change your morals right oh, and, that, and that's fine so my question would just be why do you think it is that in Europe they've abandoned the, these practices a lot of it was political if you, if you look at the history of it, especially when it came to puberty blockers and how that was handled, um, it was in large part a political decision that both um, medical groups advocates as well as pro LGBTQ organizations outwardly um, uh, protested. So it wasn't political when they did the things we agreed with, but then when they did the things we didn't agree with, that was political or? And especially like, I know you're gonna bring up Finland, I believe was one of the countries that did it, Sweden as well. Uh, and the UK. Yeah, and, and in a number of cases, Denmark, this, this is something in which experts, uh, experts in the fields of endocrinology, uh, pediatrics, they were very opposed to it. It was politicians who were pushing for this. And so this was a political decision. This is why I don't like when politics get directly involved. Something that would help here is if Lance could provide a single quote of that happening or a single source of an expert disagreeing or something related to that, it would bolster his credibility here. But I feel like he's probably running a little bit low on credibility at this point. And he's gonna need something more than just his word here to say like, oh, like all of this is bullshit. Trust me, it was all political, but. involved in medical decisions because I mean like you were saying if you want to look up the actual organizations that support this it's every major medical association in the United States everyone without like without fail but they're, uh, all, I, I, they're I got, for profit a lot of times if you don't get politically involved in the medical some, industry they'll experiment on humans for, well, some, for money and also <laughs> some of them are fair. some Ian, of them what are the not fuck? if I listed them to you right now because I have the list you some of these are not for profit institutions just looking to make a fucking buck some of these are just genuinely concerned about child health care and some of them have various, I mean, ideological biases. This isn't always about money all the I mean, time. I, I, but if you're going to reject what's, what Tim is saying about medical institutions no longer performing these operations in Nordic Europe because you're claiming those institutions have become political, I don't know how you could give any credibility to the American ones. So it's not the medical... Do you think the American okay, on, model on, of practicing Seamus, medicine Seamus, is better than the Seamus. model in Nordic Yeah, like that's the obvious, right? So the American people are doing it right because they agree with you and that's not politically motivated. But in Europe, when they disagree with you, that is politically motivated. I don't know how you can possibly dance along that line. Let Europe? me answer your question. Okay. It's it's not the organizations themselves that have done it distinctly. It was politicians and political organizations as well as think tanks that were pushing for it. And it was a lot of experts in the field that directly wanted it not to happen, that were fighting I, I, against it. But then it. why is it the case that the, so the, the nation that started doing this earlier than any of the others was the Netherlands. They started around 1990 administering puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones for children who uh, purported to be struggling with feelings of dysphoria. And so they have some of the longest term data available on this. And what they found is that transitioning has no effect on suicidality. That's part of the studies that I'm interested in is the suicide stuff. Like in 2022, they measured a bunch of people that transitioned, they were suicidal, they transitioned, now they're not. But it's like, hey, that was eight months ago. Like, how are you gonna feel in four mm-hmm. years from now? So it's hard to say like now long, now they're no longer suicidal just because they're me, like, yeah, I'm not suicidal now, but like we gotta, we, we need long-term studies. We, we do need to go to Super Chats because we're, we're, oh. we're way past. But I, I do want to ask another just question like, do you think the Earth is overpopulated? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. You don't think so? No, I want more people. I love people. I want more birth. I, w- I want more humans. I love everybody, man. I want more people on this planet. Do you, but what about climate change? Climate change is coming. It's real. It's happening right now. But I mean, but you're not Malthusian then. No, I'm not. yeah. Okay. But but, okay. but more people means you're more climate change. You got more miles to feed. It's you got true. more fuels to burn. But more orgasms. It would also means more scientists well, figuring that, that, out. <laughs> I mean, not for apparently. Tra- I thought you didn't care about that stuff. Now orgasms are important. I thought earlier. <laughs> what? 
like, that, was, the that was kind of weird, right? <laughs> it, but, more, more humans yeah. doesn't necessarily mean more climate change because more humans might figure out better ways to balance out the climate. I'll just, I'll just say one last thing, and we'll go to Super Chats, and then um, I guess we, I want to try and get to the, to the members-only port. Actually, uh, man, I feel bad for going long. We should go to the members portion so we can do uh, uh, audience Q and A and stuff. There's some big but super chats in here. I'll just I'll try and grab as many as I can, and then we'll tr we'll try to just we'll, we'll go straight to Q and A for the members only portion. But my attitude is very I'm I'm not a conservative. Uh, I'm pro choice. I think you know I've got my morality, but in the long term, I really don't care that leftists are sterilizing and aborting their children. I thought you did care. Uh, from a moral position, but like. I'm not a conservative like like Seamus, where Seamus is very much like we have to end this because you know it's wrong. I'm a, a I'm I'm not a conservative. I, I, if, if if a woman is going to get an abortion at a certain uh, a certain age, I'm like I disagree with it. But I'm more libertarian in the respect of like people can choose to do what they want to do. I think it's certainly wrong to sterilize kids. But the end result is the future is going to be a bunch of Christian conservatives and Muslims. And so, Jews. like, it's a it's and a Jews. self. If you if uh, Mormonism, yes, but the, the, the Jewish population Mormons. diaspora is like twelve million, and, and Christians and Muslims are billions. Yeah. So, like, well, but, but that's happened but, in Israel, right? Where the more religious Jews have more children, and so they're right. dominating elections. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And so we saw this since the year two thousand. Liberals have been effectively shrinking. Gen Z is the first generation in a hundred years to slightly move towards conservative in some some areas. Like I don't know if those numbers are true. I feel like I keep seeing really weird ways people trying to make that argument. I don't know if that's Gen true. Than there are conservative ones. So the end result of all of this is just like, look, man, I'm not going to convince you to vote the way I would vote. I'm not going to convince Seamus to vote that way I would vote. But it doesn't matter anyway, because in 100 years, you guys are sterilizing and aborting your kids. End of story. Wait a minute. Not you. I, well, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm saying he, from I the think political. He's, he's saying, he's saying right. I represent the left to him. Do you? Do you, yeah. do you feel like you represent you the left? You call himself a leftist. I, 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 don't, I don't feel I represent the left, no. Well, you call yourself a leftist. But I, I am, so, I'm a proud leftist. I wear that. I don't have to yeah. hide that. I don't hide my power well, so, levels. So my, my, I, I, I don't wear, uh, you know, some kind of, like, uh, hidden power My, my, my point that, is just this, right? I'm just saying I, I'm not, I'm, like, there's no single voice for the left. I'm not, I'm not the voice of the left. No, sure, yeah. sure. I'm just saying the left will cease to exist. Mm -hmm. And the middle and the right will supplant it, and then the middle will become the left, and the right will, will stay the right. Here's what I'll say, is that LGBTQ plus people were heavily persecuted by a lot of different groups, including the Nazis at one point or another in history, <laughs> and you just can't get rid of And the of communists. If you, if you, and, and the communists. Yeah, and if, and if you were to get Shea rid Rivera, of man. every single queer, if you got rid of every single gay, every single lesbian, every single bisexual, every single trans person, if you got rid of all of them in a generation or two, they would reappear. Because yeah. they're a part of us. They're, they're a part of humanity. They're a part of all of us. They just exist. They are they are a part of the human experience. Yeah, but I think that chart you showed with the left-handed thing. Yeah. If Christians and Muslims start dominating, they're going to be repressed, right? So, the the idea is, is it's like basic math. We saw this in two thousand. Liberals were having one point four five kids, and conservatives were having two point zero one kids. So conservatives were at replacement levels, and liberals weren't. Twenty years later, we see slightly more for the first time ever conservative Gen Zers in some areas. Gen Z is about, according to Pew, as progressive as millennials. In some areas, a little bit more progressive. In some areas, a little bit more conservative, which is shocking because every generation was skewing more progressive. Hmm. This is likely due to the fact, not like I said, not that children were like, I'm conservative now, but conservatives had more kids. So it really doesn't matter what your position is if your position is less kids for the left and more kids for the right. So you think transgender people should have more kids? I would love it if trans people and LGBT people had children and families. That's my personal morality. But the end result is there is one faction that is pro-abortion, unrestricted, and in favor of practices which result in a, high, a substantial rate of sterilization for children. Conservatives, be it Muslim or Christian or Jewish, don't do these things. And so the future is very obviously going to be an Abrahamic conservative country. Yeah, but we need a, a more scientific religion in the future. <laughs> this is another two-hour conversation. Maybe. All right, Ian. Let's let's read some super chats and then we'll uh, we'll try to get the members only Q and A straight to the Q and A, uh, and I'll try and find some good uh, good super chat questions. Just hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. A brand new throw was discovered. Hello, new throw. Oh oh, in, in the bad gap. <gasps> oh. oh. <laughs> the piggy said, "Push." Yep. <laughs> Lands from the serfs. Just to make sure. 
Carly says, as a woman who's had an abortion and given birth later in life, this man needs to do some research, but he sure has some balls for having this conversation on Timcast. Well, I respect it, absolutely. I thought it was a good conversation. The Thank you. TV. <clears throat> Lance. <laughs> yeah, what is it? YouTube dot slash the surf's TV. Yeah, uh, everywhere social media is sold at the surf's TV if you want to hear my musings. And uh, I, w I will add that while uh, I do distinctly disagree with uh, most of the takes of the people on this panel, they've been uh, very friendly and very nice to me. And uh, they put me in a nice hotel. And uh, Ian is, uh, is just as friendly in real life as everyone, uh, <laughs> as gonna, everyone uh, led him to believe. I'm going to the moon so let me, you did. <laughs> let me, let me, here, here's one from Marby Dog. He says, please ask your guest if he feels the same about bodily autonomy, bodily autonomy me with regards to the vaccines uh yeah i think you should have the right whether or not you want to take the vaccine so you you would disagree with the vaccine mandate uh a forcible vaccine mandate i mean he's going to say the employment and getting kicked out of your job and not being able to travel he's going to say that's not forcible so he's okay with it that's what he's about to say i already i've i i i watched the whole debate in advance guys <laughs> i prepare for these and i just watch the whole thing that's what he's about to say just let you know okay I, I, no spoilers but you know for the purposes of freedom yes but it sucks. It, that's one of those, like, it sucks, but of course, I don't think people should be forced to have to take a job against their will. Like no. if, if the government said in order to go to government school. Mandated, go, well, no, like a government mandated vaccine program I disagree with in that like every single human being is like strapped down and like, oh, I don't want to take it, but, but you have to kind of thing. But you would be okay with like every facet of society saying we require vaccines. Like oh, when there was a vaccination, like, um, uh, what was I was say, yep. <laughs> the word for it. Like a segregation of people who were vaccinated and unvaccinated. Well, like, you oppose the government holding you down and vaccinating you. Yes, I, I think you should have a choice whether or not you should do that, but other people have a, should have a choice whether or not they get sick from you because you didn't vaccinate yourself. Kind do you, of thing, do right? you think the government should be allowed to mandate vaccines for public accommodation? Yeah, for certain things, of course. Like, we already do that for hospitals. Yeah. You have to be vaccinated if so, you're a nurse or a doctor against the yeah, host good of one, things Lance. for obvious medical reasons. And I think that serves an important purpose. So... Same they're, thing they're, with the military. The military is mandatory vaccination for the same reasons. But so, so your line is bodily autonomy but not participation in society. Well, you can choose whether or not to be a doctor, you can choose whether or not to be in the military. What? Yeah, you can choose whether or not to work. And like going to a cafe. Do you disagree with that? Um, yeah, I do disagree with that. I would say in some cases I would support mandates. Um, I would support harsh mandates, strapped down to a table and forced to get vaccinated or ejected from society, depending on the disease and depending on how necessary we think the vaccine is. Absolutely, I would say, fuck yeah, if you wanna call them mandates, call them mandates. There are gonna be certain diseases that I don't want circulating in my fucking society. And part of the buy-in for being in this society is you have to pay your taxes, you're not allowed to piss in public pools, uh, you're not allowed to smoke in restaurants, and sometimes you gotta get vaccinated, depending on what the disease is, sure. Now, whether or not COVID-19 rises to that mandatory level, I think at the height of the pandemic, there were probably arguments Part, but right now, probably not. Or a movie or something, right? Well, yeah, but I'm saying that there are certain things where it makes sense from a scientific standpoint, where, like, if you're a doctor or nurse, yeah, that probably is sure, something sure. that you should what be about going vaccinated to for. It depends if that is directly going to have an impact on the broader society if people get sick so no, large. But, but that means no bodily autonomy. No, but we're talking like up in, to a point. In, you can choose whether or not to go to the movies. That's, New, that's your choice. You can choose whether or not that, to go to the How do I know? I just, I printed this. I, I It's because I helped him prep. I helped him to prep for this argument, guys. To make up for helping Lauren prep for him, I'm, I helped him prep for Tim. That's, sorry guys, that's why I knew what he was gonna say exactly. <laughs> Military. So, so that's my point, right? You, yeah. you you don't agree with the government holding you down, but you do agree with the government excising you from society. We, we already accept this. The government does that in a variety of ways already. Right, so the, lo the limitless we, for like, we already live in that Madison society. Square Garden, for instance, had a vaccine requirement, sure. and I think Joe Rogan had to refund tickets because he set up the show before the requirement, sure. and it was the government that imposed the requirement on all the businesses. So the vaccine mandate, there's, there's two ways to look at it. I think what they're asking is ostracizing or excising someone from society is a vaccine mandate, right? Using, restricting it's someone's not. ability to- You have to, an ability to, you have a choice to do it whether you want to or not. It's, it's, it's whether or not you can have convenience and, and pleasure in society. And it's, it's obviously a big inconvenience if you don't get to go to see Madison Square Garden, of course. So, but this is a, this is a by case basis as well, right? Government, the government can pressure you to do it it yeah, can take away pressure, for sure. privileges and access mm -hmm. until you do it. Yeah, as, as a matter of public safety, we already allow this. The government does this in a variety of ways for a ton of different things. I get concerned about that phrase, public safety, because if another, if they're like, this common cold is very, yeah. very contagious. Hey, we have a vaccine ready for it. And I'm like, you know, let's do some long-term studies. Vaccines are, can be very dangerous if they're not studied properly. Um, so maybe that's another conversation to have. I think it's very important not to let the medical industry govern us. Well, that's why we have a government. Also, this isn't all axiomatic, right? So you could have the position that under no circumstances would you ever support the government mandating vaccines. You could be of the position that you would. You know what? Actually, if I actually, 
it's not even a hot take. I think everybody supports vaccine mandates. Um, I think that what we have to fight about is what type of disease would would call one as a necessity, right? Like if a conservative was watching a zombie movie and you reach the end of the movie where the good guys figure out a cure, like a vaccine that prevents people from turning into fucking brain-eating zombies, I'm pretty sure any conservative in the audience would be like, yeah, obviously everybody in society should have to take the anti-zombie vaccine, right? I think most people are probably pro-vaccine uh, mandates, but it's just the the argument is like, d- what, what does the severity of the disease need to be to rise to that level? to where you're actually forced to take a vaccine. Um, otherwise, you're tossed from society, essentially, you know? Would be in favor of it, but just not for a, a disease with the infection and mortality rate that COVID has. There's a lot of different approach. So I'm going to say this. You got donkey brains. Which is... So, uh, Admar says, this guest looks like the kid of Brendan Fraser and Justin Long. Did you get that, Just Brendan Fraser? Not, not I, an oh, my life. My life. <laughs> I've, been, I've been called Brendan Fraser my entire life. It's a, it's a running meme. Um, Tim, I gotta, I, I gotta, I, I gotta, I gotta read this one. There was uh, a super chat I love how they call me a kid, you. by the way. Hey, just so everyone knows, I'm the oldest person in this room. No, I'm, 40, really? I'm 44. <laughs> oh, okay, never mind. Ah, I, We're close, you, dude, okay, you know, I gotta read it. I gotta read this one. This is important. 1776, as life says, what is a woman? Would you, would you like me to answer that? Yeah. A woman is an adult human female. Easy enough. I agree yeah. with that. So trans women are not women? Oh, also, absolutely. Oh, I would answer that. What is a woman? Females. A woman is trans, hot. Trans women aren't female. They're male. No, they're female. So they have female gametes and whatnot? Oh, this is actually very uh, interesting. Do you, do you want to talk about gametes? So in, in uh, embryonic development, uh, when you... Wait, oh god, fuck, hold on. I'm trying to think of a response to this tweet. Sneeko just texted Leafy that he's on a date with Melina's wife right now. Melina's literally in the next room. <laughs> I wish I had, like, a wig. Do you, like... Do you think if I took a picture with me with Melina and then like used the paint tool to like paint my face brown and like sneak on his date right now because he did the blue hair impersonation of me and then I could do like the brown face impersonation? Or do you think that'd be like too much? I feel like that would be. I feel like that would be too much. have two gametes obviously the sperm and the egg they combine right usually it's the 23rd chromosome the xx or the xy that is going to determine whether or not someone becomes a male or a female but that's not always the case there are exceptions to this known as people with differences of sexual development dsds or intersex people it's like there could be other combinations uh it's it's on a conservative estimate 0.6 percent to two percent of the population there is more intersex people in america than there are redheads so there's a lo- hold on i miss he was about to go on his last retard rant i don't want to miss this one hold on a woman is an adult human female Easy enough. Never mind. By the way, hey, just so everyone knows, I'm the oldest person in this room. No, I'm, really? I'm 44. <laughs> oh, okay, never mind. Ah, I, take my back. Not you, dude. Okay, yeah, I, I gotta read it. I gotta read this one. This is important. 1776 as life says, what is a woman? Would you, would you like me to answer that? Yeah. A woman is an adult human female. Oh, no. Easy enough. I agree yeah. with that. So trans women are not women? Oh, also, they absolutely oh, are. I would answer that. What is a woman? Females. A woman is Tran- hot. Trans women aren't female. They're male. No, they're female. So they have female gametes and whatnot. Oh, this is actually very uh, interesting. Do you, do you want to talk about gametes? Oh, so no. in, in uh, embryonic development, uh, when you have two gametes, obviously, the sperm and the egg, they combine. Oh, God. Lance thinks he's about to get a huge own right now. Oh, God. Right. Usually it's the 23rd chromosome, the XX or the XY, that is going to determine whether or not someone becomes a male or a female. But that's not always the case. There are exceptions to this, known as people with differences of sexual development. D- is he making this shit up on the fly? Did he plan on answering this? No, he definitely planned this out 100%. He was so excited. He was so excited to like, oh, I can answer this. These or intersex people. It's like there could be other combinations. Uh, it's it's on a conservative estimate, zero point six percent to two percent of the population. There is more intersex people in America than there are redheads. So there is a lot of intersex people, and that's there if are you other, go with the two percent. That's well, if you, go- you have to be really careful with those intersex numbers. I'm too lazy to look this up right now, so someone can fact check me. I said, but if I'm wrong, but when we looked up the percentage of people that were intersex before, 
I think that that 2% number, that includes some really weird shit for intersex. Like I think it included people with like slightly enlarged clits or like people with like three nipples. That might be a little bit of an exaggeration, but like the like that 2% number dramatically extends um, dramatically extends what we would consider like an intersex person. It was really, really, really silly. Well, that's if you, that's if you go with the two percent. Seamus is yeah. completely right, but I do want to add one really interesting but thing about this. How does that this. mean a female is a male? So here's here's the neatest part. There are individuals who have XY chromosomes, which is normally what is going to be a male, right? You develop mm -hmm. it. It's not the only factor, by the way. It's a pull, push and pull with hormones and other <laughs> stuff like that. But there are people who have XY chromosomes. So if you looked at their bones years into the future and you analyze them, a, they would be genetically male. Yep. But they have a specific condition that suppresses testosterone, which makes them develop one hundred percent like women. That's we right. are all templates. We are all templates and based on hormones uh, the expression of gender and, and different factors we turn in one direction or the other towards more male or female. Did you know that female. certain drugs well, don't affect men and women the same way? Exactly and that's that's the, the, the interesting so if, thing but we can hijack is, this entire process if we take hormones so if we take testosterone or estrogen we suddenly can have traits that are more feminine or masculine the redistribution but it doesn't of change. fat the, gross, the growth of breasts the length of hair all that kind of stuff so the there are socialist like, wants to redistribute the fat <laughs> so, so here, here's, here's the do you take blood Blink a lot when you're trying to beat this list. I feel like being able to blink to the fountains would actually be really important. I, th I think I might underutilize this ability. You think? Here's, here's what I'm getting to. Is uh, I think it was in 1993, they passed a law in the United States that required clinical testing to be done on men and women separately because women are affected by drugs differently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they found that painkillers, for instance, didn't work on women. And so these male doctors were all like, these women are sissies. They can't take the pain. When in reality, it's like the painkillers weren't working. Yeah, they were being so, uh, And they also, uh, in these studies, found that yeah, no, uh, the, the, the differences between males and females, you can't change through hormones. For instance, fast twitch muscle fiber, mm. uh, collagen in the skin, prenatal testosterone, the impact, that won't change from later in life taking hormones. Mm -hmm. So a male is not a female, female is not a male. Gen sex is bimodal. I think if you ask, it's, it's, the, it's genuinely not any 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 it's scientist. It's not bimodal. It totally is. Totally Sorry. is. Totally is. We've we, so, we've okay, gone we've gone from the left saying that uh, sex is bimodal to not rejecting it, or 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 are you just incorrect? I think I'm incorrect. Hold on. Do <laughs> <laughs> this was the question that he was so excited that he like prepared his big answer to. Oh no, bro. He like raised it. Would you like me to answer that? Oh, I'm gonna blow your mind. You know what bimodal means? I don't know. It means that intersex people exist and that there's an overlap between the two bell curves. How can you have any familiarity whatsoever with trans issues at all and have never heard of the phrase bimodal? Is that possible? I, my understanding is that like binary- Leafy wants you to call him. I don't care, I'm not talking to Leafy. To I don't you. care. He's saying Sneeko is fucking care. Melina now. That's great, he, he can do his shit. I'm not talking to Leafy, okay? He can go resurrect his career on another person, okay? Um, binary is like you're either here or here. Spit I'm, on me. I'm pretty sure that bimodal uh, means there's like a range of overlapping characteristics or traits. That there's like a mode to both of these, and the um, and then there's a like Tim said, there's like an overlap between the two distributions. This would be like a bimodal distribution or whatever. Um, I mean, we can just look it up too. Like bimodal. I, I don't know how you could have done like trans stuff and have never, yeah, I, there doesn't necessarily have to be an overlap, true. Although for, what? Paint your face. Oh yeah? Did you just get back from your date with Sneeko? What? I'm painting. You're lying to me. No. Why are you sucking at? Be mailful. Oh, sorry, yes, you're totally right. This is, I, I, I'll take a big L right there, sorry. That, that, that means, Oof. 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 Sex people exist, and that there's an overlap between the two bell curves. Oh, sorry. Yes, you're totally right. This is. Hold on, hold on. Eight more minutes, okay? The big own that's going to happen right now, um, that Lycan said is coming, it's on its way, okay? I'm I, sorry, I, bro. I just really like too. always sunny in Philadelphia. That, that, that means that 97% yeah, yeah. of females will have. 
statistically average female traits. Yes, you're correct. The reason I wanted to jump on that, though, is because you're saying that just because you have XY chromosomes, that means by definition you're male. That's not true. The you South. Didn't. The, 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 I didn't oh, say you that. Didn't? Okay. Yeah. Do you know about the South African beauty queen? Where she is, yes. by, by, yeah, by all, there's a documentary on her. By all accounts, if you saw her, you'd be like, this is just a gorgeous, beautiful woman. She has all the, the parts of a woman. She has breasts. She has, you know, a vagina, all that stuff. <clears throat> but she is intersex and her chromosomes are XY. Mm -hmm. So if you looked at her sure. genetics, she's genetically male. And but, so, so and, this isn't, but, 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 but accepting that, you know, we want, we want rights for all people, including intersex people, it doesn't change the fact that they make up a relatively small portion of society. Zero, 0. 0.6 to 2%. So right. can I, can I make a so point So a here? biological male cannot become a biological female. Well, uh, no, okay. no, no, no one is saying they can. No, well, no, no, you, no, you no, just, no. You just did. No, but that's what you not. did. You said that he, you basically said that, no? Not whatsoever. I asked you what a woman was. Yes, an adult, an adult female. human female. And I said, is a trans woman a female? You said yes. I said, a trans woman is a woman, and they absolutely are. This is not a gotcha. But a woman is a female. Cis women and trans women are different, and trans women do not say that they're cis women. They don't. And that's what makes them trans. They say they're women. I yeah, know. of course, because black women and white women are different, but they're both women. But trans but a woman women, trans woman but and a cis woman are different, but, but you they're said both a woman is female. women, Tra an adult human female. Tra right. A trans woman is male. That was, that's what makes them trans. They are not male. So I, I, I just want to make a point. Wait, 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 a woman you, is you, female. You they, they are assigned. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> assigned. We, 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 yeah, you're assigned your gender at birth. You're so a, we're, we're only we're only one. Is observed. We're two, right? We're two. We're two super chats in. I feel yeah. like a trans woman is a man, to, and a yeah. and a trans man is a woman, and they're both. You're both a trans woman and a man together. They, they don't. You, they you don't never see it that stop way. becoming one. I, you always are both. They don't see it that. Way. I think the the point about like intersex or some people having chromosomes that don't exactly match match up with their sex is not the problem for or is not a problem for what is termed the gender <clears throat> binary by the left. Mm -hmm. So I think the best way to define sex is based on a gametes. You know the role a person plays in reproduction. And Tim mentioned gametes and not chromosomes. So I would define a female as someone whose reproductive anatomy is ordered towards gestation, and then a male is someone whose reproductive anatomy is ordered towards insemination. The operating, in the operating phrase there is ordered towards, right? And, because and someone can have an issue with their reproductive anatomy, but it's still ordered towards something. And recognizing the bimodal nature of human sex. Meaning that overwhelmingly there's two big trees with a slight overlap in the middle. Well, even that overlap in the middle, the vast majority of people who are, are intersex are basically clearly a member of one sex, but with some Ooh, feature that appears that's differently. It's, it's, yeah. That's that is true. That's where the two percent intersex number goes from. I don't know how this guy is the fucking master on gender ideology. I guess conservatives have spent like their whole fucking life studying trans people now, but that it, what he's saying is true. Most intersex people are gonna be like, like it might be a woman with like high T or some weird like antigen production or whatever, but like, like for 99% of purposes, like they, they're like, it's a woman, you know? Yeah, yeah, but with it's, one, it's one parents, or two features it's that appear decide a bit that, differently. And that's, a, that's a huge problem. Um, that's a massive problem. But, but, with, but, 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 but then, people who but, you okay, genuinely but, but, can't but, but, tell but are extremely, about, extremely rare. I, 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 I don't like the argument that we should reform society around the very niche definition. You know, very, very small minorities, yeah. other than just protect the rights of. So if we're talking about, you know, the issue of uh, biological males going into women's bathrooms or something like that. You have an issue of the civil rights of females versus the civil rights of trans women, and that's where the conflict comes into play. Yeah, but the conflict there is pretty easy. The majority of people who abuse women in bathrooms is cis men. Let's go after cis men for that. Well, I think the solution is easy, just single-stall bathrooms. Like, I don't know. Also, can the, I, bathrooms, can I ask the bathrooms here aren't gendered by, I want to say, everyone at home, if you didn't know that, they don't gender the bathrooms here. There's, there's no there's signs. Because there's single rooms. Yeah. yeah. That's just that's, I, I, that's, and, that's, that's and, that's, and that's the way the world should but you don't be. My really, position has always been single. You don't have a right to be comfortable. That's not one of your rights. You can deal with it. You know, deal, life is weird and uncomfortable sometimes. That's, I don't I, But But the, the bigger question is, in general, when it comes to the, the transgender men in <clears> sports and things, women in sports and things like that, is the rights of females versus the rights of trans people and, and who gets... Uh, supplanted. Great. And so my answer to the bathroom problem would be the majority of women who are abused in bathrooms are abused by cis men. And so that we should be, if we want to protect women and go after abusers, go after cis men who attack women in bathrooms. But, but how and do you trans, tell the difference between a trans, cis man and a trans woman? I, 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 I have to add one more part to that. Trans women are more often the victims of sexual and said. physical abuse than they are the perpetrators. But, but that didn't actually address what I said, right? It's like females and trans women, who gets supplanted? If females say we want a space free from males, period, then should they have their rights protected in having a safe space, or should trans women say, no, we actually get access to the space? Do, do trans men take away from your experience? 
do they supplant you as a man? Me as personally, man? I don't care. Right. Me too. Uh, in so fact, the, so, in fact, trans men make my experience way more interesting. But you haven't answered the question <laughs> because you're saying what? supplanting their experience, right? You're taking away from women. There are women right now. Yes. Who are saying they're biological females saying we do not want biological males in our space. Mm -hmm. So should Blair White be allowed to go in that bathroom? I think Blair White should go in the bathroom where Blair White appears to to to, to fit in most. So why does she why, why does she get a pass? Because she's very passing. Is that why? I, I'm not talking about, my, my view is Buck Angel should go in the men's room and Blair White should go in the women's room. But they disagree with that. She's technically a biological male. I think Blair White stuff. agrees with what I just said. Uh, yes, but you're taking my position. And, and good for you. That's woke as fuck. Hell yeah. Does, yeah. That's we made progress. <laughs> that's why, like, I don't know if you watch the show. It's not progress. I've always had that opinion. <laughs> it's based as fuck. Hell yeah. But I've, but I've always had that opinion. So, Even so, Cassandra so, Fairbanks. So, so, so trans women can company. go into women's bathrooms. Awesome. Right. Awesome. I don't know. We agree. Uh, yeah. So my agree. issue is. Hell yeah. Seamus doesn't Disagree, agree with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Buck Angel's biologically female, but, but you Buck think, You think Blair White should have to go into a man's bathroom? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I think that just Why? causes more yeah, problems. Yeah, because, because, well, I don't want to say anything that's going to get Tim's YouTube channel taken down. Let's go to here. the members only show. <laughs> and Seamus can then say all of his nasty Catholic things. Well, yeah. All right, everybody, here's what's going to happen. I'm, I'm, uh, sorry, sorry we didn't get to the super chats. I, I, I genuinely apologize. I, we, we just, we, this is what happens. We, we go off, right? We're going to go to the members only chat. We're going to do audience questions. Smash the like button if you if you'd like, and head over to TimCast.com. Become a member. We're going to do the members only so that Seamus can say naughty <laughs> words or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but before we go, That's what they call the truth. You can follow now. the show at TimCast IRL on Damn. Instagram. You okay, so it must be Lance, you wanna... the member part of the show must be where Lance absolutely demolishes um, Tim. But I don't have like members access, so.